what did Jesus mean when he said, You must be born again, part three, the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, number 24. Let's all stand for the reading of God's holy word. For those of you who can, John chapter 3, no doubt one of the most famous, if if not the most famous, passage of scripture in the Bible. St. John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit, that is, the Holy Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, he said to Nicodemus, Truly, truly, I say unto thee, I want you to hear me, Nick, Nicodemus, I want you to hear me. We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. That's deep. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven even the Son of Man which is in heaven. That's deep. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Somebody ought to shout amen at the word of God. Holy Father, God, we praise you and we thank you for your precious and holy word. And we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace, and for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Uh, We pray that you would forgive us and cleanse us of all of our sins, not only the preacher, but everyone in this congregation and everyone who is participating online or on our internet campus, on our television campus via Roku, uh, Google TV, Apple TV, or many other outlets that they might be listening to right now or watching. We pray that you would help them to understand that not only does the preacher need to be clean, but they need to be clean to receive your holy word and then do it. For we want to be not only uh, preachers of your word 
and hearers of your word, but doers of your holy word. Therefore, Lord, we pray this morning that you would open the eyes of the blind, unstop deaf ears, wherever they might be, and we pray that you would save those who are lost and revive those who are Christians and glorify your holy name uh, and lift up your holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is in his name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Smith said, a person apart from the new birth lives a life that is dominated by his fleshly desires, and that's just a fact. He continues, his body rules over his soul and spirit. In fact, his spirit is dead. But when a person is born of the spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, the spirit becomes alive and begins to rule within his life. And now his mind is occupied with the things of the spirit, that is the Holy Spirit. with how he might please God in the worship of God in the opening up of his life and his heart to the things of God and of his spirit. A mind dominated by the Holy Spirit is called the mind of the spirit, which is life and peace and joy. End of quote. As Jesus continues explaining to Nicodemus what it means to be born again, he expresses to him that there is a part of it that he will never really understand. He compares the work of the Holy Spirit of God in the heart of the believer to the way the wind blows. He says, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit, that is, the Holy Spirit of God. For Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen, somebody. Beloved, it is like the popular children's poem by Christina Rossetti. She wrote, Who has seen the wind? Neither I nor you. But when the leaves hang trembling, the wind is passing through. Who has seen the wind? Neither you nor I. But when the trees bow down their heads, the wind is passing by. No one sees the wind. No one knows where it is coming from or where it is going. But we see the evidence of the wind when we see leaves trembling or trees bending. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit works the same way. We can't see the sinner being born again. We can't put the process in a test tube and reproduce it or study it. But it does take place. It has taken place. It took place in my life. We see the evidence in the changed life of the individual. I used to hate the church. I hated preachers with a passion. 
I hated preachers because they did not understand that the Dallas Cowboys played at 12 o'clock noon, particularly in the black community where we stayed in church well past 12 o'clock noon. And then they wanted another meeting uh, to start with the dinner on the grounds. And I was trying my best to get off the grounds. I, I was against church. I was, I was uh, uh, against religion and faith. I hated it with a passion. I was all about the partying and the uh, running women and having myself a good old time and doing other ungodly things. Until a young man by the name of Michael Lewis came to my dorm room while I was in the Air Force and showed me from the Bible how to be saved. I cannot explain to you what happened. All I can say is that the wind blew. The Holy Spirit saved my soul and, and worked the work in my soul and spirit and changed my life. I was born again. A Bible that I could not understand to save my life. I was able to understand the whole thing, uh, meaning I understood what it said. Back then, I probably didn't have all of my doctrine right, but I understood what it said, and I could not put it down. Three to four days later, I can't remember exactly how many days, but it's, I got saved, I think, on a Wednesday, and all I know is I was on Canal Street and Bourbon Street in New Orleans street preaching with some other folks from this new church that I found. I would say, preacher, what did you preach? All I knew was whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's all I hollered. And this was during Christmas season, so it was very busy. All I can say to you, beloved, beloved, is that the wind blew. The Holy Spirit of God did his work in my heart, my mind, my soul, and my spirit, and I was saved. Not because of church membership, uh, but because of regeneration, belief, and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, beloved, as I have said in the past, we may not be able to understand it all, but we believe it all and thank God for it all. Amen, somebody. Amen. That is what Jesus is telling Nicodemus. Nicodemus responds, how can these things be? He is still trying to grasp this with his earthly mindset. You know, rules, the law, regulations, and obedience to the law are things he can examine and see, so to speak, with his hands. In other words, he can wrap his mind around that. But this being born again thing that Jesus is talking about is foreign to him. He can't wrap his mind around this. Now, before you judge Nicodemus, you probably would have been worse. Jesus evidently does not think it should be difficult. He responds with a statement of astonishment himself. He said, Art thou a master of Israel and Knowest not these things? Nicodemus, as a Pharisee, knew the law backwards and forwards. He could quote it to you. However, he and his fellow Pharisees had only studied the letter of the law, if you will, and completely missed the spirit of the law. They thought salvation was in the keeping of the law and did not realize that the law and the rituals prescribed therein pointed forward 
to the ministry of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who would carry out the fulfillment of the law. Next, Jesus says, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, pay attention now, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Notice that Jesus suddenly speaks in the plural. Suddenly. He says, we speak. Who is the we here? Well, according to Old Testament law, no testimony could be accepted unless it was verified by two or three witnesses. Scholars believe that the we Jesus is speaking of is either himself, along with the Old Testament writers, prophets, or himself, along with God and the, that is God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Matthew Henry says, some understand it to mean those that bore witness to him and with him on the earth, the prophets and John the Baptist. They spoke what they knew and had seen and uh, were themselves abundantly satisfied in. Others understand it to mean those that bore witness from heaven, the Father and the Holy Ghost. The Father was with him. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Therefore, he speaks in the plural. Dear friends, I believe that it is not either or, but both and. I believe that it was God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, along with the prophets, John the Baptist, and the Word of God, we. Jesus Christ satisfied the requirements for establishing a testimony as truthful in the eyes of the law and a man who studied the law such as Nicodemus. This is why when we purchase a book, we want to know that the author has the authority to uh, write that book and that he chose to get some evidence from other sources and not just himself. And then we, we believe him, uh, at least we believe him more. Similar type situation. Same thing with a speaker. Uh, you're invited to hear a speaker, we want to look at his background, what, uh, what is his training, what has he accomplished, what is his experience, etc. To back up what he's going to say. Jesus fulfilled the law in providing that for Nicodemus. Jesus goes on to gently chide Nicodemus saying, If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things. Jesus has spoken of birth, water, and wind to describe being born again to Nicodemus. He had also alluded to the law as evidence that pointed toward the new birth, that the Messiah would bring, if Nicodemus, uh, that the Messiah would bring, rather, if Nicodemus could not grasp it now, there was no way he would be able to grasp it if Jesus told him of the higher things of God. Jesus had put the cookies, if you will, on the lowest shelf. He used things that Nicodemus was familiar with to describe how being born again could take place. Jesus wanted Nicodemus to enter into the kingdom of God. That is why he goes to such lengths to explain this to him. 
ladies and gentlemen, Jesus also wants you to be a part of his kingdom. And as the writer of this gospel states, these things were written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and believing ye might believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and believing ye might have life through his name. Allow me to say that to you again. I want you to get this. The writer of this book, St. John, said very clearly, These things were written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and believing ye might have life through his name. Ladies and gentlemen, the question today is, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Are you willing to believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Will you trust Christ as Savior today? Like Nicodemus, you might not understand how it all works, but you don't have to understand everything about the new birth to be born again. All you have to do is trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. And that is what I am going to show you how to do right now. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. There is a punishment for sin. The Bible states very clearly in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die physically because of sin. We have funerals because of sin. We have graveyards because of sin, and we die spiritually because of sin. Third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, from his own lips, Jesus Christ said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Also, the Bible states very clearly in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now that is the bad news, but I have some good news for you straight from Jesus Christ himself, for he said in this same passage, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart, dear friend, that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him in heaven. Believe in your heart, dear friend, that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, and rose again and pray with me and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul for the Bible says very clearly in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if thou you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou you shalt be saved for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved would you pray with me right now? Believing in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again, pray with me right now, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ I acknowledge that I am a sinner 
and that I have done some bad things in my life. I have broken your laws. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins, past and present. As I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to repent of my sins and change my life forever. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Dear friend, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, I declare to you, that based upon the word of God, you are now saved from sin and hell, and you are now on your way to heaven. Based upon the word of God, the Bible, welcome to the family of God, and congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, Please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. If you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please email me at gls at gospelitesociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email me that as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. 